Hi, my name's Sam, and this is my testimony of salvation. I, I got saved when I was a little kid. Um, I was brought to church, and thank the Lord I was in a, a good church that, that presented the gospel, and week after week I heard it until finally I said I need to get saved. And, uh, and I, I went to the pastor's office, and he led me to the Lord there, and, um, and it, was, it, it was a blessing. I got saved, um, but after that, um, I, didn't really, I didn't really follow the Lord. Um, my, my, my parents kind of uh, were in and out of church a little bit. We had some family trouble and we kind of fell away from church a little. And thank the Lord, once you get saved, you're always saved. You can't lose your salvation. Um, but I, I think, you know, if, if you could, I maybe would have lost it, you know, just going out in the world and some different things. And, um, you know, it's not anything real unusual, but we just didn't stay in church. You know, we were kind of, kind of bouncing around all over the place. And I remember I was 17 years old and I finally got to a place where the Lord was able to deal with me and was really able to talk to me and, and to where I would listen. Um, because I think as a teenager, often you're really distracted by all the things in the world. I mean, the world's got so much fun stuff out there for you to watch and fun stuff for you to do and your friends are, you're busy all the time and all that. And I finally got to a place where I got alone with God and I had a Bible and I was like, I was, you know, I didn't have, I, I, it was literally nothing I could do but just sit there and read this Bible. And I opened the Bible to the book of Samuel because my name's Samuel and I was like, what do you read in the Bible? You know, it's not Genesis, or, you know, so I read Samuel. I read chapter one and then chapter two and then got to chapter three. And there's this story in first Samuel chapter three about the boy named Samuel, right? And he, I, I guess my dad actually named me after after this boy, but I didn't know that until later. Um, but I was reading this story, and it's the story of this little boy who was in the temple, and his mom had dedicated him to the Lord. And he was laying down um, go, to, to go to sleep, and the Lord called him, and the Lord said, Samuel. Um, and he woke up. He had never heard God's voice before. And so he went into the priest's um, room and he said, uh, did you call me? Do you, know, do you want to drink water? What, do you, you know, why, what, what are you calling me in the middle of the night for? That kind of thing. And the priest said, I didn't call you, go back to sleep. And then he called him again. The Lord called and, and said, Samuel. And he heard him and he woke up and he went back into Eli, the priest's room. And he said, you called me. I heard you call my name. And he said, I didn't call you, go back to sleep. And then the Lord called Samuel a third time. And he went into that room with, uh, with, with Eli and, and he said, I, I heard you call me. And that's when the priest realized that it was God calling him. And he said, listen, this is the voice of God calling you. And you need to be able to recognize when God's calling you. And he said, next time God calls you, you need to sp say, speak Lord, thy servant heareth. So I'm reading this story and God is starting to use it as the as God will use the Bible, you know, God speaks to us through His words, and He was speaking to me, and He was showing me. He said, He said, He said to me, He said, you know, when you were a little kid, I called you, and you thought it was something else, and you answered with the world, and because I think that there's something in all of us that that needs God. I mean, the world only answers the flesh. It only answers the fun in the flesh and what you want in this flesh. But we, we all have a soul. And the only thing that can satisfy our soul is the Lord Jesus Christ in a relationship with God. He, we were made to have that relationship with God. So, so the Lord was showing me, he said, you know, back when you were young, yes, I got saved when I was little, um, but God wanted me to do something more than just get saved. He wanted me to live for him after I had gotten saved. And so he said, you know, I called you when you were younger and you answered with worldly things. And then I called you again. And he reminded me of a time when I was a teenager and I was, you know, kicking around in the world and kind of messing around. And I remember that I had, there were some friends that I had in Daytona. I'm from Florida in the United States. And there were some friends I had in Daytona. And so I went to the bus station and got a bus ticket and I was going to go to Daytona. And I'm standing there at the bus station all by myself. And um, somebody walked across the parking lot and he saw me at the bus station. It was like a teenage kid about my age. And he walked across the parking lot 
he walked right up to me. He looked really nervous. I remember that. He was wearing a black shirt, black and white shirt. He looked really nervous. And he handed me this piece of paper and he said, um, are you saved? I mean, you know, you need to, you know, Jesus Christ is, is he wants to save you. I was already saved that I didn't want anything like that. I grabbed the track. It was a gospel track. And I looked at it and I balled it up and I threw it back at him. And so now I'm 17 years old and God says, I was trying to call you at that point right there. I was, you see that? I was trying to get, I was trying to get you to listen to me. And then he said, I called you a second time. I remember when I was uh, about 16 years old, I was out and running around town at night and I had an old car, an old beat up car, like the first car you get when you're 16, that kind of thing. And the engine blew up. Something happened in the engine. And uh, I pulled over to the side of the road, pulled over into a parking lot and went to a gas station or went to a, a grocery store to get some oil, to put some oil in it. And I had no money in the bank. It was like, run your debit card and it beeps because there's, like, I couldn't afford, you know, a quart of oil, that kind of thing. And I was there and I was really just kind of like despondent looking and standing at the cash register like, well, how in the world am I going to get home? And I looked over and there's this lady there with a little girl, sweet looking little girl, you know, and the, the lady's talking to her and looking at me and talking to the little girl and looking at me and the little girl grabs another little piece of paper, another gospel track and walks up to me and hands it to me and says, here, this is for you and hands me $5 to get the oil that I needed for my car. And I didn't like get right with God right there. But I, I just said, thank you. So I didn't ball it up and throw it at the girl. <laughs> I'm not going to ball up. You know, I wasn't going to do that. Wasn't that bad. Um, but she said, I said, thank you. You know, and she walked away and, and I got the oil and went home. And, but you know, a year later when I was at that point where I was with, you know, that with that book of Samuel, God said to me, do you remember that? Because that was when I was calling you again. And you answered again, answered with the world and the worldly stuff. And he said, I'm calling you a third time. And I want you to say this time, speak, Lord, thy servant heareth. And it was at that point, I was 17 years old, that I got off the bed that I was sitting on and got down on my knees and, and said, Lord, what do you want me to do? I realized that all this time I've been trying to, to, to answer what my soul needed out there in the world. And, and it's just, it's been, it's been pointless. It's been hopeless. And I was running into dead end after dead end after dead end. I was miserable. The world, the world will make you miserable. It will absolutely leave you just, just dead and dry. And I was just at the end of my rope and I said, God, what do you want me to do? And uh, I, as clear as day, he said, I want you to preach. I want you to be a preacher. And so I said, Lord, I'll, I'll do whatever you want me to do. At that point, um, I, I mean, God forgave me everything that I had done up, up to that. Like I said, I was already saved, but I got right with God, got my heart right with God. I called my parents and told them and they were like, they didn't even believe me for like a year after that. <laughs> I, I started preaching to all my friends. Um, some of my friends got saved and, uh, to this day, something 20, 20, 25 years later, um, God's allowed me to, to preach the gospel and to see a lot of other teenagers get saved, see a lot of young people get saved and see, um, some, like I said, some of my friends, some of my family members. And there's, there, there is nothing that was in the world that was that was able to satisfy my soul like the lord jesus christ was and i just i i pray that if you are maybe a young person today and you are trying to be out there and, and you're trying to find out what is it that i'm searching for I, I would say maybe it is that you've come across this video and god's trying to call you like he was trying to call me maybe it's not being called to preach maybe it's not maybe it's maybe it's time for you to get saved maybe you've never asked jesus christ to save you you know, in order to get saved, you have to, you, you have to understand that you're a sinner. You have to understand that Jesus Christ died on the cross for you. The Bible says that uh, the gospel is how Jesus Christ died to save sinners. He died on the cross. He was buried and he rose again to save sinners. Maybe you need to get saved or maybe you're a Christian like I was and you need to stop, stop messing around in the world and stop all that junk and then answer God for, for answer God for good. 
turn your life around for good and, and, and live that new life um, that, that Jesus Christ has given you through His Son. Amen.